Welcome to Beyond Bite Wings, the business side of dentistry, brought to you by Edwards & Associates PC. Join us as we discuss how to build your dental practice, optimize your income, and plan for your future. This podcast is distributed with the understanding that Edwards & Associates PC is not rendering legal, accounting, or professional advice. Listeners should consult with their business advisors before acting on any of the information that is shared. At Edwards & Associates PC, our business is the business of dentistry. For help or more information, visit our website at enassociates.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Bite Wings. And in today's episode, we have a special guest, Tamara Whitley, who will be talking to us about the importance of being affiliated with a professional association. And of course, with our regulars, Robert. Hey, good afternoon. Someone who was on a bit of a hiatus, but she's back with us, and we're hey, so glad. I missed you guys. It's Lynn, <laughs> Lynn Ledbetter. So how 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 is everyone? Doing great. Doing good. Thank y'all for having me back. Yes, yeah. we're very excited to have you back. We're always a bundle of energy. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> it always is, right? Especially after the last episode when you were on. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, for uh, our listeners that w- maybe haven't heard the last episode where you were on, can you tell them a little bit about yourself? I can. Um, I'm I'm kind of a unicorn in the dental world. Um, I am now famous because of you guys and the <laughs> Beyond Bite Wings episode about keeping your patients while exiting PPOs as the um, the gal who was not going to be allowed in her husband's dental office uh, over his dead body. I think were his exact words, and that was you know several years ago, 30 some odd years. So um, my career and my background was um, working for as the vice president of client operations for Cigna, CVS, and Medco Health. So that experience has saved me and translated into the dental world. So I ended up because my job got shipped away and I couldn't leave because my husband owns a dental office. And so he decided that temporarily (laughs) um, I am to come in and find out why he was not as profitable um, as an owner as he was as an associate. So temporarily, I was supposed to come in and find out what was going on, and slowly but surely, that was in 2018 in January, and so here we are four years later, and over his dead body, he's not dead, and I'm still there. So so you're a, a permanent temp. I am yes. a permanent temporary <laughs> employee, absolutely, because now he's the dentist that says over my dead body, will you ever leave me? So it, it's, a, it's a good thing. It is a good thing. I would say so. Yeah, it's been good for that for the practice. And that episode was great. So if you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend you go back and listen to it. Absolutely. Yes. Highly educational mm-hmm. and funny at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> this one will be too, I assure you. Really? Okay, that's good. So um, professional association. Um, I know we as a CPA firm, we're also associated with a professional firm mm-hmm. called ABCPA. And it has done worlds of good for us. The Academy of Dental CPAs, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And would you say it was a good decision when you decided to become a member of the association? Yes. Uh, No second thoughts at all. I'm just sorry I didn't do it earlier. Well, it didn't exist much earlier, I was going to say, I think we got in in the second year, maybe? Uh, Yeah, something early on. But just the wealth of information that we're able to gather and glean and then pass on to the clients, there's just no other place to get that since it's such a niche market. It's like having the associated brain power of 30 other partners, right. at least. Absolutely. And uh, we can always brainstorm ideas with them and come up with ways to do things that are maybe better than what we were doing mm-hmm. before. It's just a best practices. In fact, uh, we are constantly doing that. Yes. There, there's always emails going around to the entire group. Almost daily. How can we improve this process, et cetera? Yeah. And it had you not made that decision, then I wouldn't be here. Because that was the whole point that I needed a CPA that was going to work for me 
and do it in a dental office mm-hmm. setting and who understood dentistry because there's a whole lot of mistakes that a general CPA will make, and I am living proof of that. <laughs> so here I am. We're happy you're here, too. Oh, absolutely. But there are associations for uh, all kinds of things oh, these days. Absolutely. I mean, for instance, Tamara here is associated with, and Tamara, would you tell our listeners? The American Association of Dental Office Management. Also known as? ADOM. ADOM. <laughs> ADOM. That's, That's what exactly we'll call right. it today. Because it, it's a really long title, it so is. just shorten it down to ADOM. <laughs> absolutely. Bit of a mouthful. So ADOM it is. ADOM it is. So what are some of the pros of being a member of ADOM? There's a, a, there are too numerous to talk about today, but I will give you examples of mm-hmm. that. But first, I need to take you back in time and let you know what it took to find them. Right. Because this is what i am learned or have learned is that dental offices, they know about the ADA, the American Dental Association. So all the dentists have, a, have one. Sure. The American Dental um, Hygiene Association. You know, there's the hygienist. They've got one. And I'm sitting here going, there's nobody to help me. So given my background with Cigna, with CVS, um, when they took my job away, I wasn't the least bit concerned because I was on severance. I had my non-compete in place. So I had the time to come in and figure this out. And unfortunately, I was one of these people Um, that believed working at the front office, being a practice administrator meant answer the phones, make schedule appointments, um, and take people's money. Uh That was pretty much all that that it entailed, right? Wrong. And so um, while we were waiting for my next opportunity, and this is not to sound braggadocious at all, it was just in my career, my next job was always there. It just was. And I had people coming after me to come work for them. And it was a beautiful thing. So I, we had no, you know, illusion that I wasn't going to get a job, right? And so um, we, he got me into the practice temporarily, still here. <laughs> and I sat there and started to look at all of the different issues that were happening up front that I was responsible for. So as a result of that... I learned that it was me, myself, and I, Mm. because I had human resources down the hall from me. I had IT support when the computers went wacky. Mm -hmm. I had the insurance claims adjudication just down the hall Mm -hmm. from me or a quick phone call away. You know, so if claims were getting stuck, I had other experts to help me get them unstuck, right? So I come into the dental office and I'm going, whoa. This is crazy. I mean, all of these different things that I've got to be. So now you are IT and you are HR and you are insurance. And operations Mm -hmm. and process. Mm -hmm. And I'm the chief toilet bowl cleaner when I have to be, (laughs) you know, during COVID. So anyway, the, the, the thought was this is a temporary gig. And now all of a sudden I started getting job rejections. And it was the first time in my career that I had ever been rejected. And every time I would apply for something, I would get through six interviews, let's say. And then they would tell me, oh, we're going with somebody internal. Or I would apply for something, oh, oh, you're overqualified. Um, I even had a few that they said, oh, you're underqualified. So all of this time while I'm out here with my resume, searching for the job, uh, my next thing, I'm humbled very quickly to find out, oh my, this dental office thing is hard. And oh my, I'm not getting a job. And so I'm the kind of person that if you reject me, I will just keep on and sending out resumes. I kid you not, I have them all uh, because I'm a data person too. (laughs) I have 202 job rejections (laughs) that totaled up. And so One day, Bill and I looked at each other, and he said this to me. He said, I think God has a sense of humor. And I said, why is that, honey? And he says, because he wants you here. So if he wants you here, I better make darn sure 
that I want you here. And I need you here because by this time, we're sitting here, every rock that I would pick up, I cannot begin to tell you the squeaky, squally, creepy things that would roll out. So I I picked up the IT rock. Oh my gosh, my server, my network, it is home-based. It's not even (laughs) business-based. How did that happen? My computers were old. They didn't have enough memory. What do you mean I've got to get more RAM? And what's that? And oh my, okay. And I'd slam that one back down. And then I'd have to pick up the insurance one. And this was the biggest revelation. And it goes back to that first podcast. So if you haven't listened to it, the two big issues that I found with that was that I had 34 upside down fee schedules um, that were, we were 50 to $70 per hour being um, underwater, right. right? I was basically paying my patients to clean their teeth. And, <laughs> it's not um, a good business no. model. We don't yeah. recommend it. No, 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 no. And then a really big one was I had 504 claims that were over 500 days aging. Wow, Do you understand how much money is on the table with that? Oh, yeah. It took me, no lie, 10 and a half months to clean that up. And it was me, myself, and I. And you it had was, an office administrator that was supposed to be handling this, this oh, stuff at the abso- time, right? Absolutely. So someone there... This was part of their job. Exactly. Okay. And they had been in dental office management for 15 years. Mm-hmm. So they they were, know all of this of stuff, course. right? This is the one that knew everything, right? Exactly. Okay. Wrong. They were okay. not trained in ADOM at all, and that's how we're going to eventually get there. So don't, you know, hang on. So <laughs> so I get through the, the reality of... This is going to be my full-time job now. And so I got on LinkedIn, and I took down all my resumes and all that kind of good stuff, and I ordered us business cards for me. And I was just like, okay, here we go. Buckle up. Let's go for the ride. And I just continued. Even our software could not... Um, handle the type of reporting and the type of data that I knew I needed to run a successful office with the P&L and all of this stuff. So that that had to be changed. So I'm literally trying to do all of this change on my own, and I'm like, had it. I'm working 14 to 16-hour days to be able to do all of this stuff. And so once we realize this is the full-time gig, all of a sudden in January, January of 2020, our dental supply rep told me, Tamara, we're having problems because, you know, of course, I'm the dental supply gal. I got to watch the cost <laughs> on that. And he says, we're having trouble getting um, the supply chain to get mask in. And so we're having to ration mask for three boxes every three weeks. And I'm sitting here going, what the heck? And he's like, yeah, something's going on in China. And, and I was like, okay, okay. And so then all of a sudden it started hitting home. Home, and then we all know what hit in March, causing the shutdown called COVID. All right, so as a result of COVID, so here I am, you know, on this island all by myself, trying to figure all this stuff out. Then wham, COVID hits me, and all these acronyms start coming up. <laughs> PPP, EIDL Advance versus EIDL Loan, PPP2, HHS. PRF, Provider Relief Loan, ERC. Okay. Thank God that these webinars put forward by this dental supply company that is um, my umbrella company, and I love them to death for this, they introduced people, Bob Gray, who was a co-founder with Art Wiederman, they had this thing called the Academy of Dental CPAs. And I was like, oh, okay, these are financial terms. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to listen to their webinars and then listen to Art's podcast. So I'm sitting here going, okay, buckle up, girlfriend, because you don't have a CPA that knows what they're doing. And so you're going to follow this advice of these two men. And so that's what I did. That's how I learned what to do, what not to do simply by listening to those podcasts. And so 
at it, when they told me that they were founders of it, I said, oh my. And, and unfortunately, and this is the reason why dentists need to be with the dental CPA, is because all of these terms coming up, they think that they're such experts, but they weren't as it pertained to dental offices. But I didn't know that. And so listening to Art and to Bob, all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, I need this in my life. I need a CPA that's willing to do that because my CPA told me that they couldn't do the ERC. And I knew that there was t- money on the table, thanks to Art and Bob, yep. that I said, okay, if you're not going to do this for me, I'm going to pull business that I've had with you for 24 years, which is exactly what I did. And I went out to the site that they told me to go to, and lo and behold, the heavens parted and the angels began to sing when I found <laughs> out that at Edwards and Associate was my dental CPA, and they were here in Dallas. I was like, oh my gosh. She's such our biggest cheerleader. It is. <laughs> but, but it, you, you don't understand. When you're in the desert and you have no water and you are trying to get help for your struggling dental practice, that everything is on you now. When you had an army of people supporting you before, I never had to worry about the P&L. I mean, other than operational management of it and keeping it, you know, going in and $10 million budget in corporate America. That was easy compared to my little dental office. I mean, seriously. And, and we felt your stress. I mean, we were on the clock, round the clock, taking phone calls and answering emails from oh, panicked yeah. offices oh, yeah. that were drowning and didn't know what to do and didn't know how to fill out applications or what was available. And we were there. I, you it was exhausting. Were there. But we were there. Yes. So it took 202 job rejections. It took COVID for me to finally get to Edwards and Associate. And along the way, that's how I ended up finding Adam. All right. And that is huge, guys, because you know the the old saying, um, you don't know what you don't know yes. until you realize you don't know it. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is me. And so here I am with 27 years experience in the insurance and benefits world. And even I was like, wow, oh my gosh. And so they too, once I found them, I jumped in with a lifetime membership in their, in their organization because all of a sudden I had an army of ADOMers across the country that share information. That's your brain trust. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so for me, knowledge is power, and it always has been, but knowledge is power, but only when shared. And that's what ADOM was for me, is because just like you have your brain trust for the dental CPAs, Mm -hmm. this is mine for the dental office management. And so from this point forward, I mean, this is how serious I take having an ADOM person run my office, is they will never... Be high, if I go out and I hire somebody new and they are a great person and they are a great fit for my practice, they will be immediately enrolled in ADOM. I will foot the bill for whatever I have to do. I will get them a lifetime membership, whether they're going to stay with me for the rest of their career or not, because I need somebody that knows what are the five ridden or hidden tasks or money drains in merchant services. You know, I mean, what do you do when insurance, you could be committing fraud and you don't even know it because of how you're submitting claims? And um, Dr. Roy, Roy Shelburne is, he wants to be the last dentist that ever went to jail for insurance fraud, all because he didn't have uh, the excuse he said, he says is, um, uh, not knowing is not a legal excuse, right. if that makes sense. It's not legal. Yeah. It, it, it's not it, a right? defense. It, it's not a defense. Uh, you can't just say, I don't know. Right. And so you learn from him all of that. You may well, not know, but you're still responsible. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They have people that say, what are your practice numbers, not production and collection. Every dentist in America probably knows their production and collection numbers, right? I wish they did. Yeah, Yeah, well, (laughs) maybe. (laughs) Well, they need to know their per hour cost to run their practice because if you don't know that, then how do you know that you're being ripped off in your PPO reimbursements? If you're 
break-even cost is 150 an hour and your reimbursement is 81 an hour, well, hello, you got to figure out and you got to know your numbers. How do you calculate that? Okay, well, that's my utilities. That's my rent. Well, they actually had a class on that wow. to teach these office managers how to figure out what are their numbers to know if they're really doing their job correctly. So let me ask you a question. In a dental office, who should be the member of ADOM? Um, every front desk person. Every front desk every person. Every front desk person. So whether you have an office manager or not, mm -hmm. the front desk people should be members. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And and that's where the investment of time and money comes in as you as an owner. So it, ma it made it easy for me because once I figured out that that was going to be my brain trust that I could run to in any situation, I was like, uh, sign me up. Pay I I'm paying a lifetime membership. You better believe I am. I'm not ever going to not do that. And so my front desk people, they need to be in it as well because they have classes for their specific job responsibilities as well. It's the whole front office. Office. It's the whole running the business of a dental office. I had no idea of the depth of the information they have available. It is crazy, and it's fun. And that conference, the yearly conference, oh, my gosh. Well, see, all right, hang on, let me back up because I start getting excited. Um, <laughs> they, they not only... Because several office managers may not have ever gone to college, right? right? Right. And so they have levels of distinction. So not only are they your brain trust, but they develop, they help develop the leadership qualities that everybody in a front dental office needs to have. And so they have different levels. So there's a fellowship, there's a mastership, there's diplomat. Those are the three levels. And so they recognize those that have gained um, the knowledge and have gone through the rigor to be graduates, basically be inducted. So do they offer those webinars and that training throughout the year and or, or do they just do it annually at their conference? Nope. That's annually at the conference is when you get recognized. Okay. So last year I got my fellowship and I had done all of the requirements, which the requirements are never easy. So that one had 31 um, CE hours that you had to put in. You know, you had to... Um, uh, attend local chapter meetings. So there's this big national thing, but then there's local chapters where you can go, just like I'm here with you guys today, I can go to my local chapter meeting when we have meetings to bring in some of this, um, the speakers that I just talked about. So you're, you're doing all of that good stuff and you actually get a cap and gown. You wow. graduate into being inducted as a fellow. So I got my book blue cap and gown. So it's very exciting to people who didn't ever get that extra because they were working, right? Mm -hmm. This recognizes that, you know what, these people are a cut above and it translates to higher, you, you have to pay these people more than you pay a normal manager because they have all of this knowledge. Well, they ought to be worth more. They're exactly. More valuable. I started to say they're worth it, right? Exactly. Yeah. They're worth every dime. And so now this, this coming um, conference in Scottsdale, I get my red robe and hat, which is my, um, or my cap and gown, which is my maidom. And Madom required a hundred CE hours. Wow. And um I had to write articles, which is exactly what you guys are tapping into from a podcast perspective and letting me share the knowledge that of those articles that I wrote. That's what the first podcast was. It was an article that I wrote for Adam. This even, believe it or not, it was entitled How 202 Job Rejections and COVID Got Me to Adam. And it's just being able to tell the story. So you have to write three articles for that that have to be published in Adam. They have to accept it and go through the rigor of editing and all that kind of good stuff. But the articles you've written are really based on your personal experience. You've actually experienced the things you're writing about. Exactly. Yes. And that's what's so fun yeah. is that every single week you get an email that 
that takes you to all of these different ADOM member written articles. So there could be a topic that we, you could implement just by reading what somebody else is doing. That's the beauty of this thing. Knowledge sharing. Yeah, absolutely. And so the diplomat is on my horizon for the next, next year, and it'll be in Florida in 2023. And I get my black cap and gown, which has 150, and I have to be published outside of ADOM. So, I mean, it just is... Everything. And it, it it's kind of funny because when they ask um, at the end of the conference last year, they ask us to um, rate the conference and ADOM as a whole. And this is what I shared with them. I said, everyone has heard the old adage of knowledge is power. But the best part of ADOM takes this old adage and makes a new adage of knowledge is power, but only when shared. The camaraderie and helpfulness of ADOM members who have been there, done that, who are willing to share their knowledge is incredible. Knowing you have people in your corner to support you, knowing that these people will share their invaluable knowledge with you so you can succeed and knowing that you're not alone is everything quite simply adon is everything i i can't say Amazing. it better yeah. than that right well that's great when so when is their conference this year it's it's always the week of labor day so it kicks off they have pre conference sessions so you can come in on wednesday the full conference is thursday through saturday um and it's so fun because some of my local friends that have dental offices, or at least in the state of Texas, they're seeing me post all of this stuff about ADOM and the graduation and all this kind of stuff. And they're going to enroll this first year. And so the doctor is going, the front office manager is going, and they're bringing their other front office people with them. So it's really exciting to wow. see. So so the doctors go to ADOM as well? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can't begin to tell you because, and this is kind of a neat thing too, that they have for dental spouses. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Robert, because I almost forgot to tell you all this. Um, there's dental um, spouse business network. So it's a small little, aunt, well, it's not small, but there, believe it or not, there's a reputation. I don't know how much of you, this y'all know, but there's a reputation of having spouses in a dental office and it becoming toxic. Yes. We, I didn't. We know the reputation. Well, see, and, <laughs> and, 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 and I thought, oh, surely that's just Silly. I mean, because when when Bill and I finally came to the realization I am supposed to be in this office, we we literally said we talk dentistry all day long. I seriously don't want to talk to you. You're not a dis dentist when we're at home. And now, of course, if there's an emergency with a patient, sure. of course I got to talk to him about that. But that's our, that's our rule, and and it has worked beautifully. There is no toxicity. So I'm sitting here going, "What do you mean? There's a rumor that this is happening?" Well, in an ADOM trained dental office with a spouse. You don't have those problems right. because we're taught all of these different techniques. What may work for me and Bill may not work for someone else, yeah. you know. So there is even that private separate group where we get to talk about the business aspects that maybe like a, a general front office person may not have the access to the P&L and all of that right. kind of stuff. And so they allow the dental spouses to get together as well. So on that Wednesday before... Before conference actually kicks off on Thursday, the dental spouses get to come, and we have a whole day just dental spouses wow, and whatever is wow, happening. Great. So it's really, really exciting. That and was really we, brilliant on their part mm -hmm. to, uh, to oh, include the spouses. Yeah, to yes. figure it out yeah. and, and to stop the insanity of having toxic offices just because the wife or the husband. Well, and I've got to tell you, when, when I see a spouse working in a dental office, my first thought is, mm. Mm -hmm. You cringe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. know. Mm -hmm. I've learned that yeah. since mm -hmm. then. And I just, I was like, oh, yeah. And and a lot of it, because I even asked the question on some of the, when, when COVID hit, they could not do the conference. So what did they do? They got all of the speakers and they put it into what's called fall semester 2020. And that's when I found them, actually.
actually, and I got in on the last day. So my first conference was actually a remote conference. Mm -hmm. And so I got to um, uh, watch all of these videos and get all of the classes. That's the only limiting factor that I've told them that after last one, when we did it in person, I was like, but wait, I want to take that class and I want to take that (laughs) class. You need to take these and I'll pay to watch them, you know? And so anyway, that's what happened with the fall conference was in 2020. They did it on uh, line. And then they had a Q&A, a live Q&A session where we could actually talk to the speaker through Zoom calls. And so as a result of that, um, I sat there and I said, so tell me why. Why is it that there's a toxicity if a spouse is in there? And what happens is when you get somebody who is not educated in running a dental office and you plop them in and you call them office manager and they start dictating what to do to people who have gone to school Mm -hmm. for the very thing, that's when you're going to have the rub. And so maybe on our next um, uh, podcast, we're going to talk about that (laughs) because it, it, yeah, (laughs) there's one. Um, so anyway, like I said, there is so many, um, resources within ADOM that will help you take your practice to the next level. So, I mean, I know I gush and I go on and on, but I'm telling you, you need to invest in this. That speaks a lot about ADOM. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mind is absolutely just blown Mm -hmm. away by what a professional association can do. I mean, honestly, here I was thinking that you just attend a conference, maybe have some kind of an online resource where you ask questions or maybe have a few seminars, but training sessions and not just for the members, but including their spouses. That's, uh, it's, it's like they're huge. covering all nine mm-hmm. yards. Yeah. And well, and it, it, it's funny because, and I know we need to probably, I told you at the beginning of this, <laughs> there's so many things, but, but here's a tangible one. A lot of dentists don't understand the merchant services, right? That's everybody takes right. credit cards right. in right. their practices, mm-hmm. right? Well, guess what? You're paying for that, right? Of course. Well, guess what? There's a, this trend that our old person that had been in dentistry forever thought this is a great thing to get virtual credit cards from insurance companies. So they fax the credit card to you and it's awesome. You just get to put it in manually and you got instantly paid. Well, guess what? You just lost some of your reimbursement to your merchant services fee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so get this. Now the reimbursement clearing houses. So you've got a clearing house that you send the claim through, right? And then Blue Cross Blue Shield, let's say. Blue Cross Blue Shield then sends the reimbursement through to a reimbursement clearing house, Echo Health. This is an example of one. And so when when you get there and you opt out because they taught you, Cheryl McKenna at Merchant Advocate said, do not take virtual credit cards into your office because you're losing money on the back end that you don't even know is happening. And so she ta- she taught me that. So, of course, I'm calling and getting out of it. And then they want to be so generous and offer EFT or ACH. And everything, everybody thinks that's great, mm-hmm. right? It is unless they're charging you a fee and they're going to take it off. And they wanted to charge me another 2%. So I said, no, thank you. Wow. I, 2% hard. on top of my merchant services right. fees that I had to get aligned because we were paying way too much in merchant services fees. And she is our monitor of that. We are a client of hers. So there's not a month that goes by that I know that I'm not losing money anymore because I've got Cheryl there, right? But then she takes it a step further and she just got through doing dental spouse webinar with us, and it was a live Zoom meeting, teaching us that, you know what, these clearinghouses are going to charge you 2% to do EFT, so you need to ask that question. Well, Echo Health has actually done something great. You can now print your check directly off the website and endorse it and mobile deposit it into your account. And then it's just as good as EFT and they're not charging you 2%. That's great. But I didn't know that until I got into ADOM. I had no idea about any of this. So just one example, but I've got a gazillion that I could give you. Absolutely. Outstanding. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, being part of ADOM, 
has not only allowed the front desk people to become more efficient, but it's also helping the business owners save money. So oh, yeah. even though, let's say, an ADOM trained person is hired at a higher rate, they will reap the benefit. Absolutely. By hiring them. Yep. Because of the knowledge that they bring in. Without right. a doubt. So would you also say that year after year, you know, that the information that they're feeding you is not repetitive, that you're learning something new every year? Oh, yeah. Constantly. Um, They are bringing Cheryl's class back because it was so popular last year because the dentists were actually in there. And when they, you Uh know, the antenna starts going Uh up when they find out, oh, my gosh, we're doing this. That's not good. You know, I mean, so they are having Cheryl come back this year. Um, But because she is so active within our dental spouse network, as well as across all of ADOM, um, they're bringing it back because so many people had to go to another class. So they are bringing the five, um, uh, what does she call it? Five profit hacks that's preventing you from getting a raise or that you will get a raise when you show your doctor look at all the money that I'm saving because then then you can raise you yeah. can give raises when you start bringing more money in right. I mean you know it just makes sense so anyhow the, sense. but she's just one of the examples I cannot begin to tell you the breadth of the topics that they cover at conference wow so, outstanding yeah. Yeah. yeah great information great information great resource tool and it like always it's always a pleasure having you here Tamara you're just like a wealth of knowledge and energy and energy. Sure. <laughs> no, I felt it while here. Sometimes you gotta slow me down. <laughs> Lynn is good at that. <laughs> she, suspect, she knows how to handle me. I suspect we'll have her back again. Yeah, I suspect we will. I yes, hope so. Yes, yes. In I love fact, you guys. I know this is one episode for sure we're going to record with her soon. And I know that you guys are gonna love it. I'm not going to disclose anything, no teasers, but <laughs> definitely when it gets published, um, you'll get to hear her again. So thank you again, Tamara, for being here. Thanks so much. And thank you, Lynn, for coming back after hiatus. It was great. Welcome. Hey, if I do this, Lynn has to be here every time. I know. Uh, Now we we know. That's good. It's a requirement. (laughs) It's a requirement. Awesome. So for our listeners out there, if you guys have any questions or comments, please reach us at info at eandassociates.com. And that's and spelled out. It's always a pleasure hearing from you guys. Thank you. And we look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Cut. Cut. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to subscribe to Beyond Bite Wings on your favorite podcast platform. For more info, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, or reach out to us on our website. You can also shoot us an email at info at eandassociates.com.